The numbers are in for the Reno Sparks housing market for February. We're gonna get into all of the data, so pay attention because a lot of things have changed. I'm gonna go through the data and then I'm gonna let you know what this means for buyers and sellers. So make sure you watch to the end so that you can hear exactly what this means in terms of your strategy for winning the best deal in this market. Let's start with median sales price. This only changed by 1% and actually it was so marginal that the number of $510,000 actually didn't change at all. So. That's kind of a wash from January to February. Number of closed sales is up by 5.1%. I believe this is a reflection of the fact that interest rates were down about a month ago from where they had been. Now they're kind of on their way back up. A lot of buyers flooded the market in the last month to try to take advantage of the lower rates they were seeing. Obviously interest rates directly impact buyer affordability, so I believe that is where that metric is coming from. Median days on market. So this shifted from I believe 52 days down to 40 days. This is a decrease of nearly 30%, you guys, and I believe again this is because when interest rates go down and buyers have more buying power, that actually creates a lot more competition. So while you may be thinking, oh, I can afford more of a home. That's true, but you're also that then competing with a whole bunch of other buyers who can also afford more of a home or afford to play in this market at all. So what that actually does typically is drives up prices, creates bidding wars, creates a lot of traffic at showings and competition. So you wanna focus, and I think the theme for this month and this place in our market, you wanna focus on getting the best deal and the best terms. It's not necessarily always about best price. We can manipulate with our lending partners your monthly payment to make that doable, but you wanna focus on that and your terms more so than you wanna focus on overall price, but we're gonna get into that, so stay with me. Our next metric is percentage of list price received. This is still a really healthy number coming in at 97.4%. This hardly changed you guys. It was one tenth of a percent up from last month, so that really didn't do much. But what that's telling me is that as long as homes are accurately priced and prepared well for the market, they are still getting majority of what their list price is from the buyer side. Median sold price per square foot is down, but only slightly. It's down by 1% to $286 per square foot. Not that big of a change. Again, these price tag numbers really haven't shifted much, so we're gonna move on past that. Number of new listings went up by 9.4%. So there were 325 new listings on the market month over month. Again, this is indicative that the competition from buyers that we are seeing who are re-entering the market with somewhat of a vengeance once we saw that number five get in front of the interest rates, that was driving a lot of competition. I think sellers are reactive to that. They're seeing, oh, hey, my neighbors are selling their houses. They're making money. I'm gonna put my house on the market too. I think that those two metrics are inherently linked. So that would explain why that number changed so drastically month over month. Active inventory went down by almost 19%, and months supply of inventory went down 22.7%. This speaks to the fact that even though rates have changed, they've changed the market, we still have not addressed the scarcity factor in the Reno Sparks market, right? There are not enough homes for people who need them in this community, and that has not changed regardless of the market climate. So obviously, if you are playing ball in this market, you wanna know what does this mean for me, right? So let's start with buyers. Now, we're in a really interesting place, right? Because rates had gone up and it happened almost overnight post-pandemic that shocked a lot of people it also wiped out their buying power and the market just completely flatlined however people who needed to buy and wanted to buy that necessity has not gone anywhere and so once rates started to come back down about a month ago and we saw a number five towards the beginning of the year in the front of the mortgage interest rate figure that put a lot more buying power back in the hands of buyers in this market. And so they came back with a vengeance. There was a week or two where I was personally seeing multiple offers, lines out the door at showings, like literally having to wait your turn to go in and view a home, which is something I had not seen since lockdown, you guys. So that is indicative that all these buyers who got priced out because of the high rates, they're not going anywhere. They're just sitting there waiting for their moment to be able to get back in and play ball. So 
Yes, we have seen that the rates have come back up just slightly. At the time of filming this video, today's rates are in the 6.8 range for a 30 year non-conforming loan, which is a lot higher than it was just a month ago. So yes, that's gonna impact buyer's affordability. However, what that actually does is creates a lot of opportunity, right? Because it's pricing out a whole lot of buyers. So the buyers who are still playing ball in this market are going to be asking for much better terms of the overall deal. And that's where the opportunity really is, right? So when you wipe out all the competition and you're one of the only hand raisers that's saying, I want this home, that means the seller is going to have to kind of cater to your needs to make the deal happen, right? So at that point, that's when we start talking about leveraging price reductions, closing credits, repair credits, which could be part of your closing credits, but you can negotiate all that up front. They start covering appraisal gaps. They start honoring timelines that fit your needs more than they fit their own. So let's say you need to be in this house in 30 days and your lender can make it happen. Even though the buyer might want a 45 day escrow, they're going to say, all right, I'm going to make that happen for you because I just have to sell this house and there's no one else who wants to buy it. So talk to your agent if you're thinking about buying about how to get a great deal in this market and also talk to your lender because there are so many ways to manipulate the numbers to make your monthly payment something you can kind of digest and tolerate and as soon as rates come back down which inevitably at some point once we get inflation under control that will be what happens and at that point we can talk about a refinance i work with lending partners who give good incentives if you do your initial loan with them they will waive a lot of the fees for your refinance down the road so that's something to keep in mind as well also if you're thinking about buying the way that the numbers pencil in this market are saying right now that you need to hold that property for at least two to three years to start seeing an roi so if you're somebody who's thinking about like getting in and flipping for a profit that's not going to work right now you're going to want to commit to holding on to a property this is really good news if you are thinking about purchasing something that's going to be your primary residence so just keep that in mind all right, let's talk about the selling side. If you are a seller in this market or you're thinking about becoming one, you need to pay extra close attention to the mortgage interest rates because they are drastically impacting the buyers. And we know that buyer competition is one of the key factors that determines how your home should be priced, how fast it's gonna sell, and on what terms. As I mentioned, rates have gone up from where they were a month ago. If your home was listed a month ago, you need to get on the horn with your agent and say, we need to do a price reduction, or we need to at least rerun comps and rerun numbers and see what's actually pending right now. And again, even those metrics might be lagging. So if you wanna have a competitive edge, in the market given the change in rates that literally just happened you're going to want to get ahead of that and consider a price reduction consider offering upfront closing credits to buyers that might be a nice incentive and maybe talk to your agent about another strategy to kind of bring buyers in the door and again if you're thinking about listing your home and you haven't put it on the market yet you're going to want to get ahead of this because these are lagging metrics right so i think if we look in hindsight, a few weeks from now, we're gonna see that prices have dipped yet again. So comps that sold even a week or two or three weeks ago are not necessarily super relevant right now. I would actually argue that you wanna go back to when rates were at this same point, which was probably closer to two to three months ago at this point and start looking at those comps because those are gonna be a, a bit more relevant to where we are now. This is also a time to make sure that your agent is above the rest when it comes to marketing your property. You're gonna wanna make sure that your listing photos are just impeccable, that your agent has the best photographer, that maybe you can offer some virtual tours because usually buyers who are buying remotely, those are the people who really have no choice, right? They have to buy because they're moving here for work. They're moving here because there was a divorce, a death in the family, whatever. Those might be a really good opportunity for your marketing. So you're gonna wanna make sure that your photos are great, that maybe you, you include a video tour that your agent is willing to cover a virtual tour. It does cost extra out of pocket for your agent, but I would say that in this market, it's absolutely worth it. This might be a good market to start considering staging your home and maybe doing some pre-listing home inspections just to get ahead of anything that could come up. 
that might cause your deal to fall out of contract. If you have questions about any of that, I am an open book. If you're thinking about making a move in real estate on either the buyer or seller side or both, I would love to be of service to you. You can book a free call with me. There's a link to do that in the description box below. It's no obligation, totally free, like I said and we can just hop on a call. I can get all your questions answered and help you devise your next and best steps to make sure you have a very clear and effective strategy to get the best deal possible. And if you guys haven't already, please make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. That way you don't miss any of my upcoming content. I put out videos every single week about the Northern Nevada housing market, the Northern Nevada lifestyle, and all things related to buyer and seller FAQs. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.